Hey, Christian, are you there? Hello, Peter. I'm here. Awesome. I think we have a birthday coming up. Do we do indeed? All right. Are you ready for the webinar? I'm absolutely ready. Let's do it. Happy twentieth birthday, Analysis Services. Happy birthday, Analysis Services. I can't believe it's been twenty years. So I'm Christian Wade. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm a program manager for Power BI, Azure Analysis Services, and SQL Server Analysis Services. And I'm Peter Myers. I'm a data platform MVP of 12 years and a BI expert working with my own company, Bitwise Solutions. So, as I say, it's unbelievable. It's been 20 years, an absolute workhorse of the industry, absolute market dominator, an absolute market leader, uh, de defined BI as we know it. Analysis Services, what a great product. It's 20 years old today. And there we go. Las Vegas, 16th of November, 1998, was the worldwide launch of SQL Server 7 and, uh, in a sense, the launch of Analysis Services. Yes, indeed. And it's funny to think that it was at, at, actually at the Comdex conference. I have this vision of Comdex of people, you know, wearing those um, really unfashionable trousers, launching printers as though they've just invented a printer <laughs> and launching the mouse. You know, those those bell-bottom trousers, right, saying, oh, I've just invented the printer. That's where Analysis Services was launched all the way back then. Amazing. Well, I thought we'd take the opportunity in this webinar to plot those releases along a timeline. So, of course, in 1998, 16 November, the launch of SQL Server 7, and what was known at the time as OLAP services. Now, I have no memory of this because I didn't get started until the SQL Server 2000 release, a couple of years later. And uh, this is when I started working on something that was called OLAP. And I think... I could be wrong, but I think marketing must have determined that all that services wasn't sexy enough. So it really was the branding for the first time of analysis services. Um, mm -hmm. Notably, I have to say an industry first for SQL Server was that it included an OLAP engine, but also the first relational product to include a data mining engine as well. You mean analysis services was doing data science before data science existed? <laughs> Apparently so. But look, it really didn't... Um, get interesting, I thought, until 2005. And it was a long wait between releases. I, I do recall that it was uh, supposed to be SQL Server 2003 or something. But uh, eventually in 2005, we saw the launch of the Yukon project. And uh, analysis services really went to a whole new level, didn't it, Christian? Absolutely. This was just a monumental release. I mean, it, it, it took five years. We can barely imagine what it would be like to wait five years to release a product nowadays because the delivery cycles are so much quicker. But it was absolutely huge. I mean, this was where we really saw analysis services shine. I remember Amir and Ariel actually at the past 2003 summit launching this, running through the Dimension Wizard and the Cube Wizard, and everyone thought this thing has just come such a long way. It's so well designed, such a pleasure to use, so powerful. It was just a game changer of a product, the 2005 multidimensional release. And then from strength to strength in 2008 with the CatMy project, we saw a new release of analysis services and it was block computations, right? So even faster performance yeah. for, our, for our queries. Yep. Yeah. And then I think a huge milestone was in 2010, right, with the SQL Server 2008 R2 release, which really was a focus on the add-ins to Excel and SharePoint, was that the analysis services team, and I don't think a lot of people are aware of this, that built the engine, that Vertipak engine that was available through these add-ins for the self-service BI story. This was the launch of something big, wasn't it, Christian? This was the launch, this was the birth of something huge, the uh, Tabler engine, the Vertipak in-memory column store or column oriented database, uh, this was huge. And this is of course what Power BI is powered on today. Right. And then we saw in 2012 that engine was then fitted into SQL Server, providing two modes, right? We had the older multi-dimensional mode moving into tabular mode. We had scalable Vertipak engine for you know enterprise delivery of our models. Awesome stuff. Yes, yes indeed. 2014, we saw improvements upon this with new capabilities and features. Uh, and then in 2015, remarkable that the engine then available to us for BI as a service in the cloud. Awesome. Yeah. And, and of course, this is 
where we are today predominantly, and this is really the future. Uh, Power BI runs on analysis services. Uh, so, yeah, this was a, a historic uh, occasion as well. Indeed. And then in 2016, we saw further enhancements to the tabular engine with SQL Service release. Yes, the tabular engine uh, really matured at this point. We got the tabular object model. Uh, we got uh, uh, you know, all of the, the tabular metadata in JSON and tabular model scripting language. We got parallel partition processing. It was really starting to mature into a, a really powerful enterprise engine at this point. Right. And then back to a focus on the cloud, 2017 remarkable because that tabular engine then hosting uh, models as an Azure resource. And also the release yeah. of SQL Server 2017 with that Power Query integration. Absolutely. Azure and Azure services fully managed, platform as a service in the cloud, spin up servers in seconds rather than days, allow organizations to focus on creating BI models rather than managing infrastructure, a true game changer with, with of course, the ability to scale up and down and out all in an order, automated fashion. You know, this really showed us the, the power of the cloud and how BI was really uh, uh, coming to the cloud at this point. And then we arrive at today, Christian. Happy birthday. Happy 20th birthday, Analysis Services. And it's almost like, well, the story must be finished now. 20 years, it's arrived at a point of maturity. What more could be done, Christian? Well, I wouldn't be surprised, Peter, if in another 20 years' time, we find ourselves here having this same conversation talking about the previous 20 years. So, yeah, and obviously we will look just as good as we do now. But anyway, so, yeah, Analysis Services is now coming to Power BI. This is truly probably the most historic of all of the, the, the times. You know, we're now uh, converging enterprise and self-service BI on a single, all-inclusive platform. Uh, we've realized that, uh, you know, the life cycle of a business intelligence artifact doesn't strictly fall into self-service or enterprise BI. So we're, we're providing... Analysis services with native integration to the Power BI ecosystem, and we're opening up the XML endpoint, which means that all of the uh, skill sets and community tools and uh, intellectual property and processes that are built around Analysis Services Tabula today will easily migrate to Power BI, providing this uh, uh, all-inclusive uh, one-stop shop for uh, BI for BI and allowing organizations to co-locate their business wow. intelligence artifacts. Well, that's just an awesome future. So I, I, I can look forward to 20 years' time, Christian, joining you on a similar call and just exploring all of the awesomeness that's about to yeah. come true. In fact, I'll send you the calendar invite in a few minutes straight off. I'll accept that immediately. Well, I thought it would be interesting then to overlay the community projects on top of this. So we saw then that, you know, alongside the SQL Server 2005 release, not long after was the... Bids helper. Truly useful tool, so well integrated into the multidimensional designer. Um, just a pleasure to work with, and every single uh, 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 BI developer that I knew of uh, had a Bids helper installed. Very useful. And then in 2006, the stored procedure project. Yeah, so we had some uh, 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 custom aggregation functions written in .NET code that you could call from MDX, and we had a. I think actually uh, Moshe Pazmanski was one of the contributors to that. Uh, that was lots of fun back then in those days. Okay, and then in 2012, Bism Normalizer and DAX Editor. Bism Normalizer that some guy uh, who I happen to know quite well. Uh, 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 created why he called it the he called B, Bism by the way is the BI semantic model right uh -huh. that was launched uh, with uh, Tabula and why this guy called Christian Mike called it the normalizer I'm not absolutely sure but there you go <laughs> and then Dax editor that would give us kind of like an MDX script uh, 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 view of the the Dax measures in the Tabula project uh, in SQL Server Data Tools. And then in 2014, DAX Studio and Vertipak Analyzer. Yeah, so DAX Studio, we all know, know DAX Studio. It's so useful, so many uh, uh, debugging features, see the dependent measures, just, just a pleasure to work with, just so well done, such a well-crafted product. And Vertipak Analyzer, you know, very useful to figure out, you, you know, where, where to optimize uh, uh, Analysis Services tablet models. And wait, I think there's one more. In 2016, tabular editor. 
<laughs> the new kid on the block. Yeah, tabular editor is the usage is really going through the roof. Uh, very uh, quick and easy way of of authoring tabular models. So an awesome contribution, largely I think from uh, Microsoft MVPs. Is that correct? Yes. And I think I think we might have some of them joining us later in this webinar. Mm. But wait, I'm not sure if this one's strictly a community project. Um, Chris Webb's blog back in 2005 introduced the OLAP jokes. Do you remember these, Christian? This was just classic. I will never forget these. In fact, <laughs> so many people who I meet, I ask them specifically, what is your favorite Chris Webb OLAP joke? In fact, um, I'm, I'm going to make a point of actually asking Chris Webb himself what his favorite Chris Webb OLAP joke is when I see them. Let me just read the one top of the list. So what does a calculated member have in common with a eunuch? They both can't have children. I mean, it's just they're just priceless. And I, and I yeah. think there's about 50. Yes, in fact, it says right here. There's yeah. about 50. I mean, that's one of the better ones. But sometimes they're so bad that they're so funny. I, I think they're awesome. Yeah, let me ask you one. Uh, why did the dimension take all day to take off its suit and put on a pair of jeans? I don't know. <laughs> because it was a slowly changing dimension. <laughs> This is perhaps one of the biggest community contributions to analysis services. Chris Webb, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. So guess what, Peter? I have a surprise. Really? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, we've actually managed to source a, uh, an analysis services 2000 instance to show you how we used to query analysis services all the way back in the day, a real blast from the past. So I'd like to show you that, and then I will query an analysis in Power BI to do a then versus now. How does that awesome. sound? Awesome. Okay, let's, let's see it. it. Peter, does this look familiar to you? Aha, uh -huh. okay, yes, in a distant dream, yes. <laughs> analysis manager. Right. Our good old friend, analysis manager, this machine also has Query Analyzer, Enterprise Manager, a real blast from the past. This is actually an Analysis Services 2000 instance that we managed to get hold of. I can't believe how we did it. And here we can see we have the good old Foodmark cube. We have the sales, or sorry, the Foodmark database and the sales cube. And we can actually see that um, partitions were in Analysis Services from day one. We used to generate partitions using decision support objects, which was the uh, precursor to analysis management objects, which was the precursor to the tablet object model that we use today. And for querying purposes, we would use the MDX sample application. I used to absolutely love this little tool. This was the first open source client tool for analysis services because it would ship shipped with the analysis services installer as I think it was a VB6 application so that you could use the first version of ADOMD and see how to, to, to generate MDOMD code because this thing was open source and here we had uh, a bunch of MDX functions you could select your queries you can go ahead and run it this thing was just a pleasure to work with so that's it's looked all the way back in 2000 so, Let's, let's take a look at what they actually look like today, shall we? I'm going to switch over to DAX Studio. And here, I've actually got DAX Studio connected to our BI workspace. What on earth is going on here? Well, this so, looks like a familiar tool, Christian, I have to say. This is DAX Studio. This is one of the, the leading community tools for analysis services. And DAX Studio is actually connected to a Power BI workspace because we announced recently that we are working on opening up the XML endpoint which will provide direct access to analysis engine in Power BI. Power BI will for all intents and purposes be a superset of analysis services in the not too distant future. So all of the skill set and intellectual property and processes that we have around analysis services today will migrate over to Power BI, allowing for a single, all-inclusive platform that works for both enterprise and self-service BI workloads. It's truly a game-changer, and we see this as the strategic direction for the future of 
die. So here I am connected to the Power BI workspace. This is actually a composite model. And if I run this query and we take a look at the server timings, you can see that it ran a scan. So it hit the Vodipack in memory cache. And if I run this query on the same uh, Power BI data set, which is of course just an AI services model, uh, we should see that this one actually generates a SQL query, a direct query uh, that was passed down to the source because this is a composite model. So this is a real contrast, the, the uh, MDX sample app against an analysis services 2000 instance compared to an analysis services exposed in the, the Power BI service querying a composite model. That is awesome. I love the contrast uh, of, of tools, you know, what's spanning 18 years, right? Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. That's been amazing. Thank you, Christian. You're welcome. Hey, Christian, someone's just walked yes. by my office. Can I introduce them to you? Absolutely. Come on in. Hey, Christian. Oh, my goodness. It's Darren Gospel it's himself. Darren Gospel. Wow. All right, so we're, we're both in Melbourne, so so it's been quite opportune to actually have Darren here in person. And I wanted to make quick mention of how I first met Darren, because it was the 15th of February 2005, and it was the date that I did my very first user group presentation to the SQL Server user group in Melbourne. Do you remember? Do you remember no. what the topic was? No. The topic was the unified dimensional model. And I got up there in front of an audience, I think about 100 people, and I was as nervous as anything because this is the first presentation. Of course, it was going to be the worst experience of my life. Uh, and I had uh, SQL Server 2005 R2 or beta at that point, and I delivered this whole concept of attribute-based dimensions and that the UDM is a wow. bridge that connects your data to your people. And, uh, and that evening, we met at the South Yarra Railway Station on the way home. Yep. So there you go. So Darren, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome, Darren. It's a pleasure to have you on the show commemorating Analysis Services' 20th birthday. So, Darren, you've been a Data Platform MVP since 2006, and I believe you have run the Super Server User Group in Melbourne since 2011. And the thing that I have the most respect to you on is the fact that you are actually the founder of both the legendary Bids Helper and DAT Studio client tools or community tools for analysis services. Yep, that's right. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. We're very happy to have you, Darren. Uh, it's really great to have you. So, when did you first start working with analysis services, Darren? So, I first started back in '99. I joined a uh, a consulting firm, and at, at the time, I actually had to look up what OLAP stood for because they had <laughs> Required an OLAP consultant in the in the job description, and I'd never heard of it. So I started off cold wow. in 1999 with Plato at the time. Those were the days. Those yeah. were the days. Amazing, amazing. So, what is your favourite all-time feature in analysis services? I think the things that really stick out are some of the uh, some of the things like Peter mentioned that came out in the 2005 release, the attribute-based hierarchies, and especially the MDX script. Being able to do scoped assignments and calculated members, you know, wherever yeah, you like. Game changer. I mean, Super it powerful. was so, so powerful, so powerful. Um, you, you, you know, so elegant, so powerful. You didn't need to know what you were doing, but it was just truly a beautiful thing. Uh, calculated members, absolutely beautiful. Truly a game changer. Yeah. So that's great. And. Um, so, Darren, what are you most excited about going forward with those services? One of the things that's really captured my attention at the moment is the uh, opening up of the XMLA endpoint on Power BI. I think that's going to be a real yeah. game changer about how to connect APIs and, and client tools like DAX Studio straight through to Power BI. It's going to be uh, you know, the next step in the evolution of the platform. Absolutely. I can imagine that you'd be excited about that because it will really bring all of the uh, fine grain control and programmability that we have in an AI services to Power BI and then allowing enterprise and self-service BI to converge on a single all-inclusive platform. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. It's been 20 years and AI services just has such a, a great 
future ahead of it, especially with this convergence with Power BI. So absolutely, I would have to agree with you on that one, Darren. I think that's the thing I'm most excited about as well. So that is absolutely awesome. So we are so grateful to you, Darren, for all of the work that you've done on Enable Services and for joining us for this interview. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We're here at PASS 2018, and we are very lucky to have Mr. Will Thompson himself Principal <laughs> Program Manager self. on the Power BI Desktop team, legendary presenter, explainer of all things Power BI, <laughs> Love Mr. Baby Shark. Will Thompson himself. And we are here to commem commemorate the 20 years of analysis services. Will. I know, it's amazing. Shocking, unbelievable, right? <laughs> We're here. I, I think for me, uh, given that 20 years ago, I mean, I, I was not in any state to be understanding what analysis services was 20 years ago. <laughs> But, but but it became a really big part of my career very, very early on. Okay. Uh, as we were saying, I, I remember the first day that really? I found out what analysis services was. It when was, was that? It was January the 9th, 2008. Wow. I know because it was the day after I started working at Microsoft. Okay. Um, I, uh, I, I, I joined Microsoft straight out of university. Yeah. And uh, I got plonked into this team that was doing pre-sales for our data platform and BI tools. Yeah. And so I was reading this big long list. Do you remember the old hamburger slide, the BI burger? Yeah. SharePoint so. at the top, yeah. Excel, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Point, blah, blah, blah. It was, yeah. it, was, it was before that even, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but all these words, analysis services, reporting services, integration services. And I remember there being this thing in the middle, this analysis services bit in the middle. Yeah. I'm going, well, that sounds interesting. Yeah. What, what is that? And spent however long it was getting my head around exactly what it was and what it could do. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing. So what really attracted you to Analysis Services? What were the features that got you really excited? What did you really yeah. like about it? So, so that, that was when I first heard about Analysis Services, but it, it was a, a, a year or so later when Performance Point came out oh. that I really started to get to grips with it. Yeah. Um, and particularly the Performance Point planning element yeah. and the idea of, of, uh, of kind of doing this, this financial, ha having this financial logic defined where I can say, the number that somebody enters here mm. at a high level budget, I'm mm. going to break it down and use scope set assignments to, wow. to put all those numbers down into the details. Amazing. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And just like so much easier than trying to do the same thing in T-SQL, which yeah. I never got my head and, around. Yeah. Oh, man. And just the elegance of it yeah. compared to yeah, that was T SQL. It. So simple. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. And um, what are you most excited about the future of analysis services? Yeah, the future of analysis services. Well, I, I'm a little biased because obviously being on the Power BI desktop team. Yeah, uh, it I'm, runs on I'm, analysis services, so you can you services. can say from, from uh, the desktop team. For me, there's 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 this huge investment that we're starting to make around tooling for uh, professional modelers to go and yeah. work with analysis services models at scale yeah. in. A, a GUI driven environment, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm hoping to see more and more users who are, who are leveling their skills up as they start to learn a bit of DAX and yeah. you know, they, they figure out the calculate statement. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Groundbreaking. <laughs> and, and, and then they, they start to understand filter context and recontext. Yeah. And then they realize, oh, hang on, my models are going a bit further than just me and a couple of tables. Yeah. I need to build these enterprise -like scale models. Yeah. And having tools that allow them to do that without having to go and write script yeah. in SSDT. Yeah will be really game changing. It's such a cliche, I hate it. No, yeah, it is true. And uh, it's going to bring a whole new audience to yeah. professional analysis services work. Absolutely. I think the combination of the friendly user experience and the, the, the power of the analysis services engine that is already there, we, we've got a lot to offer in that area. So yeah. Will, thank you so much thank you. for joining us. And uh, yeah, we look forward to the future of analysis services. Another thank 20 you. years, right? Absolutely. Let's do this again in another <laughs> 20 years. And we'll look even better than we do now. I'm sure. All right. Thanks. All right. Casper, you want to introduce yourself really quick? Yeah, sure. So my name is Casper Dion. I'm a principal program manager on the Power BI team. Uh, I started working on Power BI about eight years ago, and I started working on Nano Services then, uh, Six Server 2012 release, uh, tabular models we built. Uh, so yeah, I've been the majority of the time in Power BI I've spent on working on Nano Services. Thanks. All right, Casper, when did you first start working with Analysis Services? Yeah, so before I worked at Microsoft, I was a consultant uh, working with multidimensional models. So a couple of years before that, about like 2007, I started working on analysis service with multidimensional models. So as I said, yeah, I used to be a regular developer, like C-sharp and websites and 
all these things. We're always interested in data. Uh, before I actually know there was something called BI and we know we had anything, anything like cubes. I was just creating some reports with SQL and building Oracle views and things like this, materialized views. And that worked out pretty well. And then I, I found out there's something called analysis services and cubes. And I went on a, on a training course, a, a book by Tio, Tio Lachev, one of our MVPs. And uh, yeah, it was uh, ever since then, I've been working with multidimensional models and reports and loving it uh, until I started working at Microsoft. All right. What was it like being a consultant and then coming on to the product team? Yeah. So, yeah. So there was, there's two major differences, if you ask me. One, as a consultant, uh, you only have one customer. Like you talk to your customer and they come up to me and say, hey, I want this and this and this, and I want you to do, do exactly this. Uh, on the product side, we have millions of customers. So we have to make sure that everyone is happy and everyone can use these features. And that is a really hard thing to do and a really fine line to make sure that everyone is happy and can use actually use these features. Uh, the second thing that really struck me, and also is a discussion I have a lot with people I meet in the field and and uh, with other consultants, and like, I just want this feature. It should be really simple and straightforward to build. Uh, it's not. <laughs> it takes much longer on most of the times and most of the cases, even when I think it's, oh, it should be pretty, pretty straightforward and simple to do. It just takes much longer to do. And either way, it's not architected that way or shipping something at Microsoft is very different than shipping a website for your, uh, your customer as, mm -hmm. a con as being a consultant because you have to adhere to all these standards. Like you have security standards, you have uh, accessibility standards, uh, antitrust, uh, OIPI. Uh, uh, you have to document and do everything uh, directly as soon as you ship software. Yeah. So it just takes more time. What What's your all-time favorite analysis services feature? Yeah, I think for the people who know me, that's probably an easy one because it's, it's it has to be DAX. Uh, when I started, I was what I said earlier. When I started as a consultant, I was doing multidimensional models, but I really sucked at MDX. I was really bad at it. Uh, I I could make it work, but like I would just go to SSRS, create a data set, and steal the MDX that was generated from it. I made some changes there, but yeah, I really was never really good at it. And then I started uh, with Power Pivot when the first version and um, DAX started to come along, and really something different because it's two different mindsets. MDX is really hierarchical, multidimensional in nature, where DAX is tabular in nature. I'm, I'm not saying it's simpler per se, but uh, for me it was. Yeah. Uh, I also know people in the other, the, the reverse, like they can't work with DAX, but it's like they can easily would do anything in MDX. So yeah, okay. for me it's DAX and the things that you can do with it. And yeah, it's, it's still my favorite feature. All right, so thinking about the future of analysis services, what are you most excited about? Yeah, I think the the future of analysis services and the, 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 the things that I'm most excited about is aggregations, like the aggregations feature that just shipped. Uh, right now, we, we, we position it mostly as a big data solution to allow you to do big data scenarios. And it's definitely, that is really a, a, a good uh, reason to, do, to use it. But I think there's going to be much more very interesting solutions that you can do with it not just for big data scenarios. See, you can have a pretty small data set sitting in Power BI that can answer 80 to 90% of your scenarios, while the other 20 are being done by uh, the, the SQL Server database sitting underneath it. It just gives you so much more options, not just about that, but things like um, high cardinality columns, things that potentially can cause problem with the VertiPack by moving it in memory and storage-wise. And you can now have a way to work around this and 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 yeah have more options and i think we're just scratching the surface of the things that are possible i can't wait to see what everyone is coming up with and and some clever tricks and some fancy things uh with with aggregation so yeah that's that's gonna be really cool all right i am joined by mr josh kaplan josh why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself and what you do and who you are yeah so i'm uh, josh kaplan i'm the group program manager for both analysis services and Power BI Premium. So I run the, the on-prem business for our analysis services, uh, Azure analysis services, and then all the efforts we're doing right now to bring uh, analysis services into Power BI uh, is what my team's working on. Man, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's one thing in a lot of places. Yeah. So how did you get started with analysis services? Uh, actually, back in 2007, I was an intern at Microsoft. 
uh, for about six months, and I spent half that time on the MS sales team in uh, at Microsoft, and that was the, the team that does all the sales reporting for the company. So anytime you buy a copy of Windows or a copy of Office, or uh, no matter where you buy it from, we would collect all that data and we would report out to the sales field how they were doing it, out to management about you know how we were selling. Um, so I did all the uh, the cubes, the multidimensional cubes for the team at that point uh, as an intern. Uh, which cubes were still pretty new at that time, so we were uh, some of the, the first building those. And then the second half of that internship, I actually went to the analysis services team and I worked on what was called Project Gemini at the time. Oh, yeah. Which was what eventually became Tabular and eventually became Power Pivot and eventually became everything else we have today. So then after about, uh, you know, I went back to school after that internship and came back to Microsoft and uh, was working with analysis services ever since. Nice. Awesome. So with your history with analysis services, what's, what's your favorite feature that you've used? Uh, my favorite feature is really the, the programmability, the, the, fle the flexibility and the programmability. Um, you know, with AMO and the fact that the entire object model is exposed, all the scripting is exposed, I've been able to do so many things that I don't think the original people uh, intended us to be able to do with analysis services. <laughs> Uh, I've done so many different hacks, I mean, and that's kind of what got me, uh, you know, all my different roles at Microsoft is just I was able to do so many different random things with analysis services. I built my own um, cube generator uh, for business users. They could go and they could choose from a catalog of dimensions, bring their own fact tables, and I generate the cube for them. I did the uh, Az the ASLB, the Ana Azure, or sorry, ASLB, the analysis services load balancer. I keep wanting to throw Azure in front of everything, but <laughs> um, you know, where I, it's just. Um, when I was intern, I worked on MSMD Pump, which is the HTTP uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the service. And uh, I kind of overloaded that and built a load balancer on top of it, which is uh, still around today. That just took advantage of the HTTP reconnect, uh, redirects and uh, let you load balance between multiple AS servers. Um, yes. So it's just the, the things you can figure out how to do that weren't necessarily intended um, is, is what made me love analysis services so much. Now, sometimes when people come back to me with those things, it's a little different, but, um, uh, especially as a user, I love those things. Yeah, it comes back to haunt you every once in a while. <laughs> and then just looking forward, uh, the direction of analysis services and with Power BI and all of that, what, what excites you about the future? I'm just excited that everything's coming together. I mean, when we were first doing analysis services, we... Um, you know, we were at the mercy of everything that was working on top of us. Um, you know, we wanted something, we wanted to put out a new feature that uh, had some sort of display functionality. We had to work heavily with the Excel team or, um, you know, beg a third party to, to take up this new feature. Now we kind of have the end-to-end -end experience all in our control. So we can do all kinds of things we didn't think of before. And you know, we put out some stuff for big data recently. Um, you know, we have the option to own the entire end-to-end -end experience for big data. So if queries are running slow or if queries are just running differently, there's a different way you need to interact uh, with, with, with larger data. We have the ability to now make that one experience and control that end-to-end. -end. Um, also, you know, having everything in one platform from start to finish gives us the ability to do things like lineage and impact analysis, things we were never able to do before because we only owned one part of the solution. You know, having the whole end-to-end -end gives us a whole bunch of possibilities. Um, and makes our backlogs a lot larger or a lot longer, I guess, for the future. Yeah. Um, but they're all good things. Awesome. Well, great. Thanks for taking the time to just tell your side of the story and uh, take part in the 20th birthday of analysis services. Thank you for having me. So I'm, I'm so excited to introduce one of the most influential uh, analysis services users over the years. You know it's true, Chris. Don't be modest. You know it's true from Keep the going. very beginning. You know, one of the most respected analysis services practitioners on the planet, Mr. Chris Webb himself. Oh, thank you. Say whatever you feel like you have to say. I don't know, like one of the founding fathers, like a living legend of analysis services, I don't know. No. Um, I'm standing on the shoulder of giants, you know. I, You're too modest. I, I did maybe two years ago, I met up with George Spofford and had dinner with George. Yeah. You know, he's still around, so, yeah. uh, you know, and when I think about all the stuff that I learned from him, yeah. then, uh, you know, he, he was the person who first invented the idea of like a, a time utility dimension. So, really? Yeah, it was his idea. It wasn't you? No, it was George. George invented <laughs> no, all these gonna... things. So, you know, I've I, actually got I, his I, book, like, mm. I think 2001 original mm. edition, and I'm going to take a picture of it and tweet it for the birthday. Yeah. Like circa 2000, I'm going to put circa mm. 2001. Well, he gave, me, he gave me my first big break. He was the one that um, we'd hired him to do some consultancy. We should be recording this, yeah. yeah. All right. We hired, hired him to do some consultancy. 
We went out for lunch and he said, I'm writing an MBX book. Do you want to write some chapters for it? And I said, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, he's actually recording. Oh, okay, yeah. So, he's already recording. Yeah, so he said, do you want to write some chapters for the book? And um, actually, I only wrote one... I think I think I wrote three chapters altogether, but one of them was the chapter on scope statements. Ooh, you got lucky. And you see that you that lucky. was like the foundation for wow. um, for for the night for the next ten years worth of consultancy that must work. Have just been you such know, a just so long as you can understand trip. what a scope statement is, then uh, yeah. you know that that was that was black magic, black yeah. magic. Absolutely beautiful. What an experience. Mm. Yep. But that was already like well into. That was already getting on for 2004, 2005, and I'd already been using analysis services for getting on for seven years by then. Really? Yes. That far back? You know, it was wow. um, going back to 1998. Mm. So you, you'll remember Nigel Penzi. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. think that Nigel yeah. Penzi is um, enjoying his retirement somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not in an old people's home, but yeah, he, he's. Um, so we. So the company I'd worked for, I'd been doing some VB6 mm. development very, very badly. And um, I'd, been, uh, I'd been on a kind of graduate trainee program where we had to rotate through different things. And so I got put on a project where we were evaluating um, OLAP tools. Mm. And I got put on the project just at the point where we'd, uh, they'd, they'd evaluated MicroStrategy and all of those other things. And um, they started to, to evaluate this new OLAP tool that Nigel Penzi had recommended that Microsoft was about to release. It was going to be OLAP services and it was going to be groundbreaking. And all of the other people in the industry were either going to spontaneously go bankrupt or um, try and sell themselves to you know, the other competitors because they knew that this was going to completely crush the competition because Microsoft was coming into the OLAP space. And um, So over the years, what was your favorite analysis services feature? Well, a, there are so many, but I mean, many to many relationships were... Um, many to many well, relationships. Now, now in the age where many to many relationships in uh, tabula, uh, you know, the, the road to hell, many to many relationships <laughs> in multi-dimensional, no, oh, they were they were complicated to understand, but they were a thing of beauty. You know, you had your dimensions down the side, you had your measure groups up yeah. the top. It's you like, like chose the yeah. right thing. You could choose how a dimension related through. You could have chained many to many relationships and control the path. Beautiful. Yeah, it was but, really elegant, yeah. simple, just a simple checkbox. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But then. And then when I think about scope statements and the beauty of scope statements, I don't think there's anything, anything in the world of programming that was ever as beautiful as a scope statement. Or ever, I don't think there was anything in the world of consultancy that was so obscure and unintelligible to customers as scope statements, right. and therefore such a great source of revenue for a so, consultant. So original, so elegant, yes, and so exactly. powerful. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The customer would say, Chris, I've been working on this problem for like, three years and I can't do it. And then you'd like sit down, yeah, you'd like make a bit of theater, you know, click your knuckles, <laughs> write two lines of code and bingo, you know, the calculation's done. Yeah. So Chris, what are you most excited about the future for analysis services? And you can um, refer to any of the guises of analysis services. The big news, of course, at the moment is multidimensional coming to the cloud. <laughs> and now it's been released. Now we're talking about it in these videos. It has to happen. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there, there are still people out there that care about multidimensional, me included. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some interesting fun times moving those legacy systems yeah. up, to, uh, well, up to Power BI Premium. Well, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been uh, great working with you on an ad services for all it's these years. It's been a pleasure working and, with you. Um, yeah, so thank we, you so we, much we for your We should finish up with an OLAP joke. Yes, yeah, so tell me, what is your favorite of... of in, so, in fact, I, I often ask people, what's your favorite Chris Webb OLAP joke? Yeah, so but folks, this time I'm going to actually ask Chris Webb himself yes. what his favorite OLAP joke so is. So we haven't rehearsed this, and I haven't told Christian what my favorite one is. If you're wondering what an OLAP joke is, Google for it. You will, <laughs> you will not find many OLAP jokes out there. But, Christian. Yes. What was the cube doing when it set fire to its wallet? I don't know, Chris. What was the cube doing when it set fire to its wallet? It was trying to warm its cash. Brilliant.
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Chris, it's a pleasure, honestly. It's been a pleasure too. Yeah, absolutely, as always. I am joined with the legendary Marco Russo, all the way from Italy. Marco, how you doing? Very well. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm in the cube. You're in the, the cube. real cube. The, the real one. cube. Yes. Wow. Great. Awesome. So, how did you get started with analysis services? Oh, a few years ago. Many. <laughs> I, don't, I never say how many. Uh, I started with the very, very, uh, probably the first release of uh, all app server. Uh, for SQL Server, something like that, I don't know, all up services, something like that. So it was the very, very first version of a product that Microsoft bought from uh, Panorama, which is a company in Israel. And um, I was teaching in Italy about uh, programming languages and databases, and they said, uh, Marco, you also know something about BI and data warehouse, this is something for you. And so I started studying, uh, started this way, and started to work a lot with uh, all the versions of analysis services, and now called the multidimensional. But now we have Tabular, and so yeah, the entire story of uh, analysis wow. services. So you've been there from seen, the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. Awesome. Yes. That's a that's a amazing history with the product. Absolutely. So looking back over the years, what would you say is your favorite feature of analysis services? There are many. Uh, there are <laughs> many, and uh, but one is probably the the one I yeah I, I'm you know, tied to this feature, which is the many-to-many -many relationships uh, in analysis services multidimensional, which now is still available in Tabular. Yeah. I mean, many people says, oh, Tabular doesn't support uh, many-to-many -many relationships, which is actually not true. Well, you can do easily. now. We but have the, the many-to-many. -many. Yeah, it's <laughs> different. We have to record <laughs> yes. a bit about that because yes. uh, uh, it's a <clears throat> slightly different technique, eh? yeah. uh, but a topic for another, yep, yep. another video. Um, <laughs> And uh, I wrote uh, uh, the first white paper about many-to-many -many relationships. It's still published on SQLBI.com, by the way. And uh, it was all only about multidimensional. And the second uh, version I wrote, uh, I, I included uh, the same patterns uh, for uh, Tabular too. So nice. and. Uh, and this is this was also the way I was in touch with the development team because I had a few bugs. Yeah. So when, yeah. when I said, oh, we should do this with the many to many, it didn't work. Didn't work. So I said, guys, <laughs> what is happening? And so we started to interact. And so that nice. this nice. is what happened. And then looking ahead to the future yeah. of analysis services, what gets you excited? Oh, ho, ho. There, <laughs> there, there is an amazing feature that is coming in the next release of analysis services, uh, and of course, also it would come also for Power BI yeah. and I don't know Power Pivot, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's amazing because um, it's also delaying our new version of the book about DAX. We have a second edition, and on Amazon they said August uh, 2018. It's simply not true. <laughs> the, the book is not finished. We are waiting this feature because we have to complete the book with the feature, which is for uh, analysis services, uh, uh, also called the uh, And with this feature, we will be able to do many, many stuff. For example, uh, we will be able to, uh, probably I cannot say that, but uh, we, we can do many, many things. So for example, we will be able to implement um, will be available also through some technique using this feature. And of course, uh, we will solve the uh, many measures that uh, can be calculated in a very, very, very easy way to maintain. So it, it's it's really amazing what is coming. That, that does sound exciting. Yeah, yeah All absolutely. right. Well, Marco, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much. And happy it. birthday to Analysis Services. Happy birthday. Okay, I am very excited to have Mr. Jeffrey Wang here. What, there is no one better to help celebrate the 20th birthday of Analysis Services, one of the key influencers over the history of Analysis Services, Mr. Jeffrey Wang. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. So, Jeffrey, when did you first get involved with Analysis Services? I joined the AS Engine team in 2004, just in time for uh, Analysis Services 2005 release. Wow, that was a, just an amazing release. That was a, just such a release that just changed everything. You could tell that you guys had waited five years to release because you had so much uh, goodness to release at yeah, that Yeah, I got the tail. And, uh, tail end of that one and just in time to join the uh, shipping party in, Ca in Canada. Oh nice, yeah, yeah. so what was your role when you first joined? 
uh, engine developer. Engine developer, yes. and then you became development manager soon after. Over the years, over yes. the years, I get promoted through the ranks and become a, from IC to a manager, and uh, have been there for a while. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've seen analysis services in you know the engine of analysis services in so many products. And uh -huh. what is your favorite all-time feature of analysis services? DAX. Of course, of course, <laughs> yes. Mr. DAX himself. Of course, DAX. So why is it that you like DAX so much? What's so good about it? Well, before DAX, I worked on MDX engine for many years. Yeah. And uh, I keep being asked by customers for so many features I want to add, and that they have so many problems. I wish I could solve those problems. But I couldn't, and the DAX gave me the opportunity to get things right from okay. the beginning, okay. and uh, it's, 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 it's a very uh, blessing since then because people love DAX, and uh, as many of the MDX issues get resolved. Like, like what? Give, give me an example of something yeah, that was easier to do. I will give you two examples, one okay. functional example and one performance example. Okay. okay, sure. The functional example, for example, in MDX you have this popular function, current member. Of course, okay? one of the most famous uh, MDX but uh, unfortunately, that function only works uh, when you when the attribute is filtered down to a single member. Right. And it failed in all the other cases. We have more than one member. Right. right. And uh, people keep asking, can you give me a, something like a current set or current members? Of course. Yeah. We tried, by the way. We tried. And we yeah, failed. I often wonder. Yes. Right? yes. Because you know you could uh, put a set in the where clause, but then current member wouldn't work correctly. I know. Right? And yeah. the index, you use values function, and it just works. It's it's so so much I know, uh, I know. easier yes. to deal with multiple selections. Yeah. Absolutely. Works so that's one better. example. The other example, I'll give you a performance one. I couldn't yeah. do MDX in MDX. Everybody knows. Uh, uh, block mode is the great mode. Yes, uh, cell by yes, cell mode yes. is the bad mode. Of course, right? bad, bad. But yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> uh, people always, like I have received uh, so many customer incidents where they are confused why when you do things this way, it's a block mode, uh, that way it's yeah. a cell by cell mode, yeah. and what is the rule? There's no rule in the end, yeah, okay? Yeah. You just yeah. have to learn all the tricks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 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 give Chris all the opportunities uh, to yeah. consulting gigs, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, I know customers are very frustrated by that. Yeah. While in DAX, we get to do things right from the beginning, yeah. and uh, so everything is a block mode by default. Brilliant. Yes. Absolutely brilliant. Uh -huh. And lastly, Jeffrey, what are you most excited about analysis services going into the future? Going into the future, we're working on this uh, cool feature called, uh, you can say, the direct query to tabular models. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why I like this, I think this is a great feature, is I remember uh, during back in the uh, multi-dimensional days, yep. during one of the planning for a major AS release, so what's the top customer features, and all the PMs agree, it's like a customizable models. You have a central model, and then you can allow users to customize them is is the number one feature and just okay. mash up their own data sets. Yeah, on the fly so and do so, so they can they can models. basically take an existing model, do some small customization, and call it their own. Okay, beautiful. This is the number one. Very empowering. Uh, ask yeah. back then the top priority, and after like uh, several weeks of planning, it turns out to be too expensive, so we cut it. I waste all these weeks of planning. I, yeah. I hate those kind of feelings. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, there's a good reason for it. It's just yeah. too expensive to do yeah. using the uh, old architecture, and finally we have a later the right foundation, we get to work on it, and uh, when we release it, I can say that's going to be a, a, a revolution in Absolutely. the BI industry. Absolutely, it will be a huge yes. game changer. I'm very excited about yes. that myself. Yes. Jeffrey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, um, thanks for I, I having look forward me. to interviewing you in uh, another 20 years when we commemorate 40 okay, years. Okay, okay, yes, <laughs> Thank absolutely. You okay. Thank you. All right, that was really awesome, and so a word of thanks also to Adam Saxton that helped out with those interviews and for the post-production of this video. Well, there you go, Christian. Happy birthday, Analysis Services, 20 years old. Happy birthday, Analysis Services, and thank you, Peter, for your help. I look forward to seeing you in another 20 years for Analysis Services' 40th birthday party. And I look forward to it as well. Thank you, Christian.